108 meters. G'day, my name's Daryl Webb. Today we're gonna to have a look at the infrared tube, TH50 version two. Anyway, uh, in this video, what we're gonna do is uh, just a quick unboxing, um, and then we'll put it on a firearm, we'll mount it, and then um, we'll take it through the, uh, have a look at how you actually zero it in. Anyway, let's do that. All right, when you open the box, you got this nice little handy carry case in here. There's everything you sort of need in there. Um, now I've had this opened and charged it up, so everything's not organised like it was, but you sort of, you'll get the idea. Okay, so we've got some um, zeroing pads, there's little heat pads. An Allen key. Uh, a little infrared embossed uh, cleaning cloth. You get a pair of 30mm rings, uh, high mount. You get a, uh, a little wall adapter for charging it. You get a couple of these uh, 18500 batteries. Um, there's two of them, I've got one in there already. Uh, you get an eyepiece that screws on and there's also a charging USB-C charging lead in there. And then you get the scope itself. Anyway, so um, the basics of the scope are it's got um, charging there, USB-C port underneath that cover. Underneath this cover here, there is the battery, so you can change them. They give you an extra two hours of runtime. The unit has two built-in batteries, and it's meant to give you about eight hours runtime on that. Um, and I've got like four of these, so you can get uh, you can get some big runtimes out of it. Uh, basic operating is you turn that on there, hold it in, and it turns on. You can change your palette, you can change screen brightness, you can stop start recording from there. Everything else, you're zeroing and zooming in and out, is done for this dial, and it's a clicky one. Um, all in all, the big focus on the end. Nice and uh, grippy, but not too loose. It won't move by itself. And a nice uh, lens cap to cover that big, uh, if you can see it, 50 millimeter germanium lens. Anyway, um, that's sort of it unboxing. Uh, it's got everything you need in there to get you started. So uh, now we'll move on to uh, mounting it on a firearm. All right, so what I typically do uh, everyone's got their own way of doing this. This way just works for me. I take the caps off the, uh, the actual uh, rings and I'll sit them and I'll just have a, a rough idea where I'm going to want them and I'll sit the scope in there and then sort of check the eye relief and then check the distances I've got between the scope. So that looks reasonable. Um, and what I can do is now I can just lean into that and check the distance and then we'll go on with it. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with that there. Um, just with these rings, you're always making a bit of a compromise. I would have liked it was back a bit further, but I haven't got enough rail there, but every gun's different. Um, I like to set it back so when I'm wearing like a jumper like I am at the moment, um, so the eye relief is actually a little bit close because quite often at night when I use these firearms, I'm wearing thick jackets. So, um, and that pushes the, the firearm away from your eye even further. So I try to, um, Try to set them so I've got a little bit closer eye relief than what you think when you're wearing a t-shirt or a light jumper like I am today. And then what we'll do is, let's go over these quickly. And I'll get back to you with the next step. These are all going to be just loosened, just loosely put on at the moment. Alright, these are just done finger tight. I haven't actually leveled the, the uh, scope yet. But what I'll do is, I'll get these, uh, the main thing I want to do is to get these rings push forward on the gun into the rails where they want to sit and then nip them up so once i sort of got it in there as you can see i can move it all around what i like to do is actually push the, the actual ring forward uh, just for recoil because it will shift that way anyway and while i'm holding that i'll just give it a quick little nip i will get some quick release ones i think quick release would be more handy for the way i'm going to do this because i'm going to use this on uh sort of uh, oh at the moment three different guns i'll use it on the 223 this one, the 17 HMR, and um, yeah, just got to give, just give that a little push to make sure that's all the way forward on its rail, just so there's no room for it to uh, sneak forward on you and wander around your zero. So, and just give them a little nip. Now, of course, me being me, I forgot my uh, torque wrench at home. So um, the way you can do it is. If you don't go silly, instead of using the allocate the traditional way, with it long in your hand and winding down on it, if you turn it up the other way, if you just nip these up what they what I call firm, they're about eight and an inch pounds. 
Um, I was shown that way a long time ago by someone who, who um, works with scopes and it's really hard to crush it. Don't do it as hard as you can, just you can give them a firm little nip with the, with the Allen cap that way and um, you will be around 18 inch pounds. I think in the book they said maximum of 21 inch pounds. So um, 18 I've always found to be more than adequate. When you've got multiple screws like this, I, I always think that if you do both of them 18, so I'd try to err on the side of caution, I'd probably do them at about 12 or 14, uh, just for multiple screws and see where they come up at. Anyway, let's uh, get this thing zeroed out, I'll level it to the gun, and we'll go from there. All right, so I've leveled that up with the base of the uh, scope, the flat surface on the bottom of the turrets, um, to the flat surface on top of the uh, rings. Uh, it's probably not perfect, but this is a zero MOA rail, so it's not as critical to have. As long as you always hold it vertical, it's all right, but it's very, very close. Um, you can put them up and look through and find like a wall or a pole or something that's dead straight. You can do it that way too. There's lots of ways to zero your scope, but uh, I find for me, by eyeballs always worked. Um, but if you're using like a 10 MOA or a 20 MOA or a 30 MOA rail, then it has to be exact. Otherwise, uh, when you wind elevation, you'll get windage as well. Um, if you're using thermals, I suggest don't use a like a an MOA rail. Use a zero MOA rail, um, only because you end up with your crosshairs right at the very top of the screen, trying to bring the uh, the gun back down. So if you're not shooting long range, and you and if you're using a thermal, um, just get a zero MOA rail. Anyway, let's move on to uh, making up a target so I can see through the thermal with it. All right, for a target. This has been a way, there's lots of different ways of doing it. You can use the heat pads, you can use uh, styrofoam and shoot because then you'll see the heat from the styrofoam. Easy way for me to find, because it works all the time, is I put this target against something, you lean it back at a slight angle, and you'll actually get reflection of the sky. And because the sky's cold, you'll see this beautiful big black cross. And then what I do, um, I'll aim for the center of that, get the reticle on that, aim for the center of that, then see where the bullet goes. Now if you're doing a one shot zero, then what you do is, um, as I'll show you in the phone, uh, sorry, record through the screen on my phone, um, it's pretty much as a one-shot zero feature in, in the scope. And what it pretty much is, you line the reticle up, push two buttons, and it takes a photo. And um, your crosshair will be on here, and it's frozen. And then, so you don't have to hold the gun still or anything like that. You can look through it, and you just move the X and Y axis, and you move it to where the bullet hole was. Um, for me, quite often if I'm doing like an air rifle or something, I'll take three shots and then I'll actually stick another little silver patch on the group and then I will move, excuse the cocky, then I will move the, uh, the crosshair to the, uh, the little patch where I hit and that's it, it's zeroed. And I'll do that at a shorter distance and then I'll do it further out at where I actually want to zero. For instance, this one's a 17 HMR, I think I want it to zero around 42 metres. So I'll do that where it's going to end up and then uh, you can move it back out to 100 and verify because um, 100, well you get 106 or something like that is where this one will be zeroed at and that'll give me a maximum point blank range of about 120 metres. I'll just hold on and I'll be a uh, half an inch high somewhere and half an inch low at 120 and uh, that's fine for uh, rim fires and rabbits. Let's do that. Just to show you how I work out these numbers, um, so I've got the gun saved in there, the Hauer 17 HMR. I will go on the scope. I've measured the height of the scope above the bore. Um, so you go from the center line of the bore. So it's 2.25 inches. So I'd put that in. Okay on that. And then I'll go for maximum uh, MRD. So this is your maximum point blank, blank range. If I get a 30 millimeter circle and I want all the shots to stay in it, I'll go 1.5 mil, 1.5 centimeters. Calculate that. It tells me the recommended zero distance is 106 meters. It's uh, maximum point blank range is 119 metres. Um, it'll be 0.6 high at 100 metres, and near zero is 44 metres. So I'll zero at 44 metres, and I find this always comes out very close. Um, and sometimes I'll actually just uh, I'll just check the uh, the 106 metres to make sure it's bang on there as well. Now let's do that. All right, this is hard to do, so I'm not going to show you everything. But what I'll do is I'll go through a quick. Uh, show you how you sort of change the profile. So I'm holding the long button in. Uh, I'll go down to the next page. I'll go to gun profile A. Uh, yes, click on that. Well, do that again. Yep. So it's gun profile A. Click on that and then you choose the one you want. So say I've got it there. This will be for the air rifle, which I'm not doing right now. 
put it on there and you can change the name of it, what the distance is, and you go up to there and you click on that and pretty much there you can see there on the bottom the X and the Y. Um, that is your, uh, what it's set at now. Um, so now if I do, say for instance I take a shot right now and I can see where the bullet hits and say it's uh, just for intensive purposes, say it's up the top right hand side of that, uh, that tree in the middle of the screen, I can see a sign on that tree. So it hit right in the middle there. So when, what I do is I freeze the frame while you're holding on what you shot at. Okay there, so you hold the power button and the camera button in. I was pressing the wrong button. Um, okay, so there you can see, you hold that in and then you'll see the little snowflake symbol down the bottom, of it, like all ice. Um, so now you can see that's actually frozen. So I can move the gun around now and the, and the side picture won't move. And then what you do is using the dial, you can dial it up, you can see it's going. Anyway, you would dial it up to wherever the bullet struck. Uh, touch again and you can dial it left or right up to where the bullet struck and um, press it, long, long press it and um, it saves it. And then when you fire your next shot, it will be on target. All right, so you can see on there, there's a um, three little shots sitting there. So now what I'll do is I'll whack a little bit of soil, foil on it, and um, we can aim at that. Now I'm going to aim down to the centre of that. I'll adjust it to that. Hopefully that should be where it's at. And if you like this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see um, some more stuff, um, some hunting stuff, especially with this uh, TH50 version 2, um, then hit the subscribe button. Anyway, bye for now.